And the dinner tonight is over there, just there's a restaurant just right where you came down the hill from the bus stop, probably. Mignon. Okay. Mignon. Yeah, that's all Mignon. Good morning, everyone. Hope you had a wonderful evening. Uh, we are uh, pleased to have Yunnan Wang tell us about F theory landscape with FC SCFT sectors this morning. Mm, so, uh, good morning, everyone. Well, first, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this great conference at this very beautiful place. And you may notice I'm probably the only person whose title does not contain anything about machine learning. Uh, that's just because I cannot squeeze it in, in this sentence. Uh, but I will talk about machine learning for a little bit, yeah. And so my major topic in this talk is a recent study of F3 landscape uh, that's of some supergravity theory that coupled with uh, strongly coupled ICFT sectors. And first, I'm going to give a brief survey of the string landscape as we know. And we know that the super string theory has many different versions, or you know, you can uh, call them different limits or different descriptions, uh, including a 10D super string theory, 11 dimensional M theory, and some you know, fictional uh, 12 dimensional F theory. So uh, they are due to each other uh, on different geometries. So you can think about it as different corners of the whole uh, large connected uh, network. And so if you are interested in the 4D compactification models uh, with supersymmetries that are not too many, like any less or equal than one supersymmetry, then usually you have this following different choices. For example, you could uh, take a, t a 10D type two super string theory on an oriented fold, or a 10D heterarchic string theory on clavier three fold, or M3 on a real a seven dimensional manifold that's called G2 manifold with special holonomy or F3 on EV club of fourfold. So those four cases are all give rise to um, the 4D N equal one supergravity, while the, there are some other possibility like F3 on spin seven manifold, or even you could start with some 10D non supersymmetric hydraulic string theory as well. So these two cases will give you this uh, non supersymmetric 4D theory. So I, I'd like to point out, you know, priori, we don't really know which is the most correct or you know, best uh, this ensemble of the whole uh, string landscape and because we don't know like uh, we, we, where does our real world live in. However, to start with, you still need to pick a particular corner and you really study the geometric ensemble. It could be possible that you know, our real world does not live in any of this ensemble, but I mean, anyway, if you want to study uh, some distribution of this uh, model we to start with one particular corner. And this, in this talk, I'm going to focus on the uh, F3 geometric ensemble on EV club of fourfold that give rise to 48 inch one supergravity. So uh, from the data science point of view, one particular reason is that, you know, as we know, the F3 ensemble has some of the largest finite number in any string theory literature, like uh, more than 10 to the 3,000 base geometries or 10 to the, more than two, 10 to the 200,000 uh, self-dual flux vacuum on single geometry. Well, these numbers are a little bit different than the euro numbers inside me, but because here uh, as the self-duality condition. Mm, yeah. Not too much different. So first of all, I will give you a very brief survey uh, in introduction to uh, what the basic setup uh, in F3, you know, basically in one sentence, uh, F3 is a geometric description of strongly coupled type 2P superstring theory in presence of uh, some seven brain object. So the geomet in the geometric picture, the you can think about the complexification of a 12 dimensional theory on an elliptic club BL D plus one manifold, uh, which this thing X has a complex D dimensional base uh, B, so it has 2D real dimensions. And in the end, you get a supergravity theory on a space is a dimension is R nine minus two D comma one. So the geometric picture uh, is sort of like this: where the base B, the base manifold, is the actual space-time uh, manifold where the superstring lives in, and over each point on the base there exists an auxiliary two torus, whereas it's a point where the smooth torus you could identify. You know, your type two B active dilaton field with a modulus of these uh, two towers. <coughs> While 
uh, over some particular subset D uh, inside B, you could have some singular fiber over it. Uh, and this location of singular fiber precisely corresponds to the location of these uh, seven brains in your type 2B superstring theory. And the uh, point is basically, uh, if you go around this uh, stack of seven brains, the active dilaton uh, field tau could undergo a monodromy, and so uh, it's not actually uh, well-defined at this point. Okay. So mathematically, if the vibration uh, your, is usually described by a so-called Westrass form, uh, which is a cubic equation in two, two complex variables, x and y, and those coefficients f and g are some polynomial uh, functions of base coordinate on, on, on B. So basically, uh, this f and g, which are called Westrass polynomial, encodes the information about you know, the uh, vibration and uh, the configuration of seven brains uh, in, in this picture. So uh, basically, precisely, this, this location of seven brain is that the is a discriminant locus, which is delta, vanishes, where this uh, fiber is singular, as I just said before. And uh, physically, the important thing is that uh, the open string mode attached with this stack of seven brains will give rise to this non-abelian gauge theory in your lower dimensional uh, physical theory. Okay? And the way of reading out <coughs> What particular Lie group you have, uh, you can read out from the following table with some information of the order of vanishing of F, G, and delta uh, over this co-dimension one loci D, and also uh, some other information that are not specified in this table. But the uh, punchline is that you basically can just get any Lie algebra as you want in this A, B, C, D, F, G classification. And for example, if you have this uh, particular simple Westerhaus model, that the order of vanishing of f and g is four and five, so you can just read out from this table, then it's an EA gauge group uh, on living on this hypersurface D that's given by this equation u equals zero. Okay. Also, uh, there could exist some localized charge matter field uh, on some co-dimension two local C inside this hypersurface D. And, and basically you can think about uh, this co-dimension two local as, as an intersection of two stack of seven brains. And the open string modes between these two stack of seven brains will give rise to a localized chart matter field in your, uh, in your lower dimensional physical picture. Okay. So the one particular interesting class of this localized chart matter field is a so-called strongly coupled matter field in F3, which is pretty mysterious. So that uh, appears when uh, this polynomial of F and G satisfies its uh, so-called co-dimension two for six criteria. That's when F vanishes to order or uh, greater or equal to four, and G vanishes to order greater or equal than six on this co-dimension two loci uh, in B. Uh, for example, if you have this particular model where we, I just modified this u to the fifth term in the previous equation to u to the, u to the fifth times v, so you, you see that this g will vanish to order six on this conformation <coughs> two locus now. <coughs> okay? And in this case, if you are, we are studying a 60 F theory where the base is a complex twofold, then this conformation two locus actually uh, are just a point and in the 60 F3 picture, there actually exists some localized 60 conformal matter at its point u equal to v equal to zero. So uh, after you decouple this gravi gravity uh, sector and also the EA gauge rule from your theory by just taking the volume of uh, the base and you know, this uh, divisor u equal to zero into a large volume limit, then you will get a uh, pretty non-trivial 60 one comma zero SCFT with the EA global symmetry because in this case, the EA gauge symmetry decoupling, it becomes a global symmetry. So this is precisely uh, some called, something called E-string theory, which uh, is a pretty hot uh, topic right now. Many people have been working on this. And uh, if you instead think about a 40 F3 picture using the same equation, then the co-dimension two locus will become a complex curve is uh, just uh, in general a genus G uh, Riemann surface. 
And in this case, this localized running couple matter on this curve is a 60 E string theory compactified on this curve C. And there's also some uh, terminology uh, in the previous literature that call it a 4D conformal matter, uh, but uh, this conformality only appears when it goes to IR. So basically, if you just compactify on C, it's not conformal, but if you <coughs> run uh, to IR, then it could become a non-trivial 4D N equal one FCFT. Okay, so uh, uh, this and my brief review about F3. So uh, what is the, uh, as uh, Codian has briefly mentioned in his talk, uh, there is actually a pretty huge ongoing project of the classification of uh, 4D F3 vacuum, uh, which has uh, four different steps. And because as we uh, just see before, and the fundamental geometric object uh, using 4D F3 is a club, elliptic clavier of fourfold fiber over a complex threefold base. So basically, the first step is to classify the base uh, topology of the base threefold. And a particularly important, interesting physical characteristic of the base geometry uh, is a, a generic vibration on, and non physical clusters. And this is defined, so the generic vibration over B is always well be defined uh, such that basically the coefficient of this polynomial F and G are most random. And physically, it means that this gauge group from this geometry are smallest among all the different possible vibrations over B. And the possible gauge group you can uh, uh, find from this particular generic vibration is very limited. There's only 10 different possible cases where the first nine of them all correspond to some localized uh, gauge group while the U1 is something non-localized and I'm not going to talk about in here. Then after you classify all the different base manifold, you classify different vibrations, X over B. And uh, actually in this list, you will not find your favorite guard gauge group like SU5 or SO10, but if you uh, consider some non-generic vibration, you could get this uh, SU5. The third step, after you specify all the geometry, you have to classify some other very important discrete quantities such as the G4 flux, which is responsible for breaking God gauge group and you know, giving rise to chiral generation. And basically, uh, so the function here is that in a 4D F3 construction, if you don't include this G4 flux, you basically, I don't think it's ever possible to uh, get a non-zero uh, chirality in your standard model. And finally, uh, uh, you still need to, after you specify all the discrete data, you still need to study the shape of the scalar potential and cl classify a different uh, vacuum and other study cosmology. And this is a pretty grand project. But the interesting thing is that, as, as an interesting uh, result, uh, even by looking at the uh, first step, we already got a number of very in interesting uh, results, physical results. So the particular subset of Tarek's threefold base has already been probed and partially classified by me and Wati and other Northeastern group, uh, Jim Cody and Ben, ben Song, a few, in, in the past a few years. So uh, basically, Tarek's threefold is given by a set of discrete data, and you could uh, just uh, draw a picture of a Tarek threefold like this, where uh, it's just corresponding to a triangulation of, the, of this plane, where each point corresponds to a one D ray and this line corresponds to a 2D cone, and this little triangle corresponds to a 3D cone that corresponds to a local coordinate patch. And so uh, geometrically, uh, this, this point has a 1D ray will uh, cor correspond to a complex surface or, or divisor that carry a geometric gate group, okay? And the topological transitions uh, between the target threefold are pretty simple. It's called a blow and blow down, which just corresponds to some uh, subdivision of these little triangles. Uh, and then, uh, basically, we, we could construct a pretty complicated, huge network uh, of target base threefold, where each uh, node corresponds to a different uh, target threefold, and the edge between them corresponds to this topological transition as blow and blow down. So this is an oversimplified picture because, uh, in reality, uh, somewhere in the middle, there could be a node that connects to like 
a thousand of different edges. So it's actually a very complicated object. However, uh, we have done some Monte Carlo program and you know, uh, partially we probe the statistics of uh, these nodes in it. Now we just summarize the essential re results. Uh, so general require, uh, re uh, constraint on these things are uh, is that the generic vibration X over B cannot be too singular, which I'm not going to talk about this in detail. And so, so we have several general results that actually, you know, we agree with each other in, in different pro projects. The first, almost all the bases will carry non so gauge groups, and they are typically, uh, they are usually SU2, G2, F4, or E8. Now the other uh, cases can also happen, but they are just rarer than those four, four, of the four guys. The second uh, very interesting result is that actually almost on all the bases will support those uh, strongly coupled matter sectors that I just talked about earlier uh, from this quantum dimension two, four, six locus. So as a statistics, out of the uh, about 10 to the 3,000 bases we have probed in our Monte Carlo approach, only 10 to the 250 bases do not have this strong coupled matter. So these are these pretty strange things are actually ubiquitous in F3 geometric vacuum. And, and the third uh, general statement is that it's typically pretty hard to enhance this gauge symmetry by choosing some non generic vibration over B. Now, the basic reason is that the total number of complex structure moduli you can play with in this geometry is, is really small. So uh, uh, basically, the punchline is that you could not ever construct SU5 gauge group on any of those uh, general bases in this landscape. Now, you, 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 of course, you could construct SU5 on some very simple base like uh, CP3, but that's pretty limited. Uh, then the first uh, result uh, is pretty consistent with the previous one, that is that the existence of weakly coupling limit is very unlikely because the uh, only place where you have a you could have a weakly coupling type 2b limit is that is for a, a small number of gauge group like SO8. Okay. So this is um, a result from this probing program. And so actually, uh, then we raise a question that what about a more general three-fold base geometry like non-toric three-fold base? Now this, has, this project has a lot of difficulty. And the first immediate one is that uh, it's actually even unknown how do you really compute a non so gauge group G just from some local geometric data near a divisor. No, because uh, we don't know what's uh, like the uh, necessary and insufficient condition to decide a gauge group just from the normal bundle here. It, it's pretty non-trivial in the threefold case. What about no, 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 no. So, um, so they have a formula that deciding you know the order of vanishing of f and g on a divisor, right? Yeah. But that's like it's actually a lower limit. So, so th you could compute a so-called gauge group in zero k, but actually a subgroup is the actual one. I see. So the this is not an exact not, formula. Not local data might force you higher. Yeah. And so, uh, in early this year, we have uh, written a paper on using a machine learning technique to help you construct this map from a set of input data, which is uh, uh, some local triple intersection numbers between this uh, divisor D and its neighbors, and the output data is a uh, non gauge group G, and there are only 10 different possible choices, so you know, it's analogous to this uh, digit uh, classification, classification program. And so we, we just use some supervised machine learning techniques uh, with multiple classes, and not uh, something that's too new. Uh, so the input data triple inter intersection number we're interested in are basically you know, those uh, self triple intersection numbers uh, of these divisors D1, D2, and D3 in this little triangle. And we label it on the vertex and edges like this. There are, there are none of them in this picture. And we don't need to specify this D1 dot D2 dot D3 because for any smooth toric threefold, this thing always equal to one. So we never need to write it out. And as an example, if you want to study what's a 
gauge group on this device which has a topology of Hertzberg surface with four uh, Tark neighbors, which is a case of a Tark uh, threefold. Then the only uh, independent triple intersection numbers near it uh, are in this red square. There are only 15 of them, while the other ones are not independent. So basically, our input data is just a vector of 15 integral inter 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 integers. And so uh, the uh, training data we take are a particular set uh, of this Hertzberg surface uh, in some threefold base that we have uh, generated in the previous Monte Carlo program. And as you see, the total number of gauge group, uh, this di distribution of samples with different gauge groups are very unbalanced. For example, 70% uh, of this divisor will not carry any non zero gauge group, while only like uh, 24 and 8 of them carry a, a rare gauge group like SU3 and SO8. So if we just uh, naively apply this data and do this machine learning, uh, you know, the result is that you basically cannot learn any information, you just completely dismiss uh, those rare cases. That's what, what we really have in value, just uh, treat them as some error. So to uh, prevent this, we need to do a resampling where we just up sample and down sample each of these classes and to make e the number of samples in each category to be approximately 200,000. Where the down sampling is just you randomly pick some of them and up sampling is just copy, copy those. Oh, okay, question. Yeah, when you do that, um, so you might, the thermal structure may be in the SU2 models also, yeah, when you, so in the sense that Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, but because the total number is still already pretty huge, so we already basically captured this essential structure, even if you just take a small part of it. It's just some, some sampling, it's not very problematic. For, for the upsampling, you just... Yeah, just copy them. So there are a lot of repetition in this training data as a result. I mean, you could have also permuted the... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, exactly. but that's like... Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, but you know, the uh, possibility of permutation is pretty limited in our case. Uh, you could probably throw like maybe an order of 10 different permutations, but I mean, you still need to multiply it by a huge number, like 10,000. So. Uh, yeah, 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 I could. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Why are there 50 factorial differences? Um, um, so the permutation is. Is I think probably you could only uh, yeah we can talk about this later, but it's pretty limited. Yeah. So uh, we have tried different training methods, including a decision tree, a net neural network, and random forest and other stuff. And as a result, we find that the decision tree and random forest are actually pretty good in our case. So in terms of speed, accuracy, and interoperability, we actually found this decision tree is actually the best. So uh, because uh, it has a natural tree structure, it's really simple to uh, derive some theorem or conjectures out of it. And for, if you are a fan of this neural network, there's some detail. The detail is that the neural network is a pretty simple structure and it's highly unoptimized. Uh, well, if you just take more time to train it or optimize the structure, your performance will just get better. But as you can see, this training time is just incredibly long. You have the volume of uh, input data. So finally, we just uh, use a, a decision, decision tree. And we, in this case, we generated a pretty huge decision tree with like 60,000 nodes. And the maximum depth is like 49. And as a result, we just generate a large set of rules in the form of inequality of these uh, various triple intersection numbers. And uh, we basically train a different decision tree for a, a class of divisors with each H11D, and, all, uh, and accuracy is, is all between 85% and 99%. So another pretty interesting uh, result is that we could apply this, uh, exactly the same technique and to learn whether a complete intersection curve C of two target divisors contain a strongly coupled matter or not. So now 
this uh, curve we're interested in is the intersection of uh, D1 and D2 is over here. And the relevant triple intersection numbers around it are those 14 triple intersection numbers. So these are the input data. And after this uh, training of the decision tree, the auto sample accuracy you guys 95%. And the pretty interesting uh, fact is that we could, uh, is this an example of an uh, explicit uh, machine derived rule. It says that if this triple intersection number D1 squared times D2 and D1 times D2 squared are all uh, less or equal to minus two, then you always find that this curve D1, D2 is a quantum machine, is a 4-6 curve. Does this rule account for most of the samples? Uh, yeah, well not most, but it's just uh, like the most, uh, most uh, significant leaf of this decision tree. So this apply to, mo to the largest number, but not most in this. So, so this yeah. is a sufficient condition Singularities. Uh, this is sufficient. Happens so yes, that happens a lot. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So this is pretty high up in decision tree, or? Uh, oh, usually if you have a decision tree, you have a node that applies to like the largest number of samples, and it's uh, pretty high up. So yeah, this is like the most natural thing you can get. It's like 90% of the samples. No, 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 no. Much less than that. Much less. Okay. Yeah. So. And you could actually prove that analytically by hand. So this is a nice example of a theorem generation by this machine learning. So this basically end my first part, the first part of my talk, which is you know, using machine learning on this uh, particular F3 questions. And the second part of my talk is about how to really construct a standard model out of this strongly coupled matter and uh, advertised uh, before. And, and the essential the ma major motivation of this project is that uh, as we have scanned in the whole f 3 uh, ensemble, uh, the appearance of SU5 gut gauge group and this standard model of product gauge group, SU3 cos SU2 cos U1, are both uh, pretty rare, actually, I, I could say. And instead, the majority of geometries only have the gauge group in the form of product of SU2, G2, F4, and E8. <coughs> so now you want to ask, uh, how do we uh, ever embed standard model inside those gauge groups? And the answer is that the, uh, basically the only way to realize it is by embedding the standard model gauge group into a single E8 uh, on a complex surface. And then you break down this E8 to SU3 cross SU2 cross U1 cross U1 to the fourth. Uh, by a gauge flux. Have you considered flux breaking G2 times SU2 being standard model? Um, yeah, but you need to figure out an U1. It's very difficult. It's just yes, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, does SO10 figure in your, does the G2 SO10 figure in your? Um, uh, yeah, but, but, but you could just consider a subgroup of like E6 or SO10 inside the E8 and further break and broken down to this one, right? So, so it doesn't make too much difference. So they're all sub so they're just exceptional series, which are all subgroup of E8 and down to, uh, E7, E6, SO10, SU5. They are, yeah, we also consider the same thing. Um, uh, however, uh, the reason that nobody has ever considered this possibility before is that uh, if you just consider this uh, resulting a few contents from uh, this uh, from this adjoint representation of E8, and what what are the multiplicity of the matter field after this, this this breaking down? Then you find that uh, after you uh, just carefully do the counting of the chiral standard model generations, you never get any non-zero net uh, chiral generation from this construction, which is a pretty old result by Tata and Taylor and Taylor and Watari. Six. So the punchline is that we we must use some localized matter field, but in F three this is very interesting because the only form of localized matter field charged under E eight is a strongly coupled matter field. Okay, uh, I talked about before. For example, we could just use this Vertras model, and as I said, uh, this strongly coupled matter field in four D is an Eastern theory compactified on complex curve that couple with EA gauge group and the gravity sector. So in order to study the 4D spectrum, 
we need to first study the spectrum of 60 E string theory first. Uh, as we know, E string theory is very difficult to study because uh, it is uh, intrinsically strongly coupled uh, as CFT with no Lagrangian description. And basically, uh, the, the thing we know is that uh, all the fields or operators in E string theory are represent different representation of E gauge group of global symmetry. And then a natural question to ask is, and what are these EA representation and the corresponding quantum numbers like of course representation under the superconformal group or, or even some uh, uh, like easier information like the representation under Lawrence group and was there R charge and R symmetry. Uh, so in this paper, our strategy is to go into the M3 two picture where the singular EV club L straightforward uh, described as by the Vestas equation is resolved to a smooth one. And in the 5D picture, actually, uh, uh, you got yeah, gauge theory with conformal matter, and it goes to a Coulomb branch in, in 5D. <laughs> so in this 5D M3 picture, uh, the M2 brain wrapping uh, two cycles C inside this smooth clavier manifold will give rise to particles uh, where it, its mass is proportional to the area of these two cycles C. And in the 60, if you go back to the 60 after picture, if the size of five, uh, if it basically, uh, if the, the area of these two cycles C, you shrink to zero size in this limit, then this M2 brain wrapping mode in 5D picture will correspond to some massless particle in the 60 after picture. So this is a main strategy. And the particular very concrete geometric a model we study in this paper is a global virtuous model that's a genetic vibration over the Hertzberg surface F11, which contains a minus 11 curve uh, with a EA gauge group. And the resolution of singular virtuous model was already studied before, but in this paper, we also uh, use another equivalent uh, technique. Uh, uh, that is, we first construct a 40 target ambient space in form of uh, P231 bundle fiber over F11, and then the resolution of the singular vector model will correspond to the blown up of this toy ambient space. And finally, the blown up toy ambient space will be a reflexive polyhole that giving rise to the correct harsh numbers. Uh, and uh, the more important fact is that we could uh, compute the triple intersection numbers of uh, this uh, X hat, which is pretty uh, crucial. And this is a pretty long list of blow up. And as you can see, each ex exceptional divisor in this blow up will correspond to a new uh, point in the 40 target ambient space. Now the most interesting part uh, is that we will find that one particular exceptional divisor in this sequence is actually a, a non-flat fiber, which means that it's a, it's a complex surface with complex dimension two that entirely lives in the fiber direction. And the intersection of this non flat fiber with the Euro you know, E8 exceptional divisor looks like this. So the E1 to the E8 are just correspond to the 8 Dinkin node of the E8 gauge group. And you see that non flat fiber only touch three of them. So, and we also studied the, top uh, the topology of the non flat fiber. We found that it's basically a generalized dipole surface. GDP2 uh, with a single minus two curve and a uh, two minus one curve. So there are three pretty crucial uh, curve class of C1, C2, and C3, which are intersection between this non flat fiber and exceptional divisors. And th those things generate the Maricon of this non flat fiber, this compact surface. And so the physical uh, importance of this non flat fiber is that, as I said before, so the M2 brain. Uh, wrapping any curve class on this non flat fiber will give rise to a massive particle in, in the 60 F3 picture. So, because there are infinite different curve class on the complex surface, you get an infinite uh, tower of states. Okay? And the EA representations uh, can be uh, read out by computing intersection number between this curve class and the exceptional divisors of E8. Uh, and the more important thing is that the representation of these particles under the 60 masses little group SO4 
uh, can be directly read out by computing the dimension of the modular space of curve C, which is a classical result by, by Witten uh, 20 years ago. And as a result, uh, we, here we just leave some lowest representation of EA that we found in this approach. The lowest one is the adjoint representation uh, 248. So there's a 40 hypermultiplate plate in this representation and also, of course, the vector multiplate of EA gate field. Uh, so those things are already known before. And besides that, we also found some higher representation like 3875, which is a non-adjoint 60 vector multiplayer, but it's still a real representation. Uh, also some even larger uh, representation with higher spins. Uh, but uh, but uh, we, we are still not clear about what their interpretation in this e string SDFT is like, what are the actual operators this thing correspond to or what are the scaling dimensions that they are pretty unknown mm, up to now. Mm. Yeah. One dimensional modular space, so you can apply with yeah, yeah, one dimensional, uh, precisely, 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 one dimensional modular space. So this is like two dimensional, three dimensional. You, you just find them on, on your non plot fiber. What's the interpretation of a non adjoint vector multiplet? Uh, yeah, briefly talk about this later. Okay. Maybe we should discuss uh, afterwards. Then uh, we need to reduce it to 40 by commodifying on, on complex curve. So in, in general, this genus can be arbitrary, but for simplicity, we just take the genus equal to zero, so it's a P1. And so after this reduction, uh, the Lorentz group, SO1,5, is broken down to SO1,3 times the structural group U1 of this complex curve, U1J. And the R symmetry group, SO2, is broken to U1R of 40n equal 1, super symmetry. And so to preserve 40n equal 1 super symmetry, we need to twist this theory. And this group, a uh, product group U1J times U1R is broken to a diagonal subgroup. It's some classical story, actually. Uh, and we have a gauge that characterized by a line bundle L sigma over this complex curve sigma. So for example, the 60 hypermultiplate case was already studied by BC and Vava in their classical paper. And basically, after you do a group representation decomposition, you'll find two different uh, Fermionic field components in 4D with different chirality but they have different net number after you, you count them. So you, as a result, you get a non-zero net chiral generations from this 60 hypermultiplate. We, we also, this is a new thing, we also do this for the 60 vector multiplet, but it's, very non, uh, it's a little bit non-trivial because the fermionic part of the 60 vector multiplet is actually consists of two 60 wild spinners in the 4 comma 2 representation uh, of this product group. And they satisfy a so called symplectic Marana condition. And after th this Marana condition is imposed, you know, the degree of freedom is reduced to one half in the end. You'll get a, a, a correct counting of the degree of freedom. And after this twisting and you know, this reduction of uh, group representation, you'll find four different uh, components in your 40 group, in, in your 40 theory. And you can compute the net chiral generations you have four different contributions from these four terms. And you have an overall factor of one half because of the symplectic Marana condition I just mentioned. Is the claim that these 60 vectors reduced to 40 chirals? Yeah, well, the fermionic part will reduce to chirals and anti chirals, and they have different uh, net number after you include the flux. Okay, but, but it's, giving, it's giving 40 chirals attributes of high reduction. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, interesting fact is this expression is not a Euler characteristic. So it's in general, it's pretty hard to compute. However, if you take this curve to have a genus zero, then it's a, it's well defined. And it's always well defined. It's just not a, it's in general, it's defined on complex structure moduli, but here we don't even worry about it. Yeah. So the uh, 40 model building setup is a 40 x 3 construction. It's a local model with a stack of EA7 brain on a complex surface. Uh, where uh, it also has a non strongly coupled matter on a local curve that corresponds to string, 60 E string circuit reduced on P1. And you do the flux breaking of EA to the standard model gauge group times the extra U1 to the fourth hypercharge by gauge flux. And so the bulk field uh, on this complex surface S will give rise to Gaussian of obvious non chiral finally. Uh, they give rise to the Higgs sector of standard model, while the localized matter field will correspond to 
you'll give rise to the Cairo fermion matter in standard model. So this is basically the origin of the fermion matter, uh, like a quarks and leptons in, in, in this model. And I will not talk about its scales. Uh, but you have a, you may have a question that because we have infinite tower of states in, from a 60E string, so what field should we include uh, as a standard model fundamental matter field? Well, the, the answer, uh, we don't have a very clear answer, uh, but you just keep in, you keep in mind uh, that uh, this uh, infinite higher spin tower is not a, a bad thing because in your QCD there also exists infinite higher spin towers of but they are just composite particles and just not fundamental quarks. So we need to. They're massive, right? Yeah, they're massive. It's, it's a little bit different. But if they are protected by chiral symmetry, then they're still masses. <coughs> and in your case, are they infinite higher spin? Are, are they all particle states or are they some string states also? Mm, they are for the M2 brain wrapping ones are all particle states. Uh, there should so be a string state, but we haven't considered that. Okay, so there could be string states around. Also, the, yeah, I'm talking about particle state. So, well, well so what we can do is, is we just study the sum of lowest representation. And we found that the lowest one, the 60 hyper multiply in the fundamental representation, uh, will never give rise to any non zero chiral amount of generation, so, so they, are, they are gone. And the next uh, possibility is the uh, 3875. And after this uh, group breaking, we find that it's possible to find this. Uh, cho gauge bond of choices it gives rise to three chiral generations. Can you say anything about Yukawa? Yukawa, yeah, it's just completely similar to the BCF and Waffle, completely parallel. Uh, not, it's not on this slide. It's a small section in our paper. No, 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 no. no. Uh, last, uh, last page. <laughs> so this is a. Uh, I'm finish my talk. Uh, so basically, uh, the punchline of this uh, new study is that uh, uh, I think this is probably the only way to uh, ever uh, realize standard model in the vast majority of S3 geometric landscape is this by embedding a standard model gateway into a EA guts and using a strongly coupled matter field. And, and, and maybe you could use some reinforcement and lear learning to systematically find this uh, vector because they are subject to some very non-trivial, non-polynomial conditions. And of course, the situation is physical uh, dynamics not very clear because uh, the C string and complication to 4D are kind of non Lagrangian. And we haven't solved this detailed problem at Triple W speaking yet. Mm. Uh, nonetheless, uh, even just from a string theory perspective, uh, just in the 60 case, we still uh, provided a new way to study this strongly coupled SCFT from this FM theory duality geometric picture. I mean, yeah, something else interesting to do. Yeah, thank you. All right, nice talk.